All right, let me show you guys a very useful trick for controlling bevel width in Blender. And why is this trick so useful? Well, Blender has multiple ways uh, to create bevels manually, but the problem is that you can't do that very freely. Both those ways uh, have some limitations. Okay, let me show you way number one. Way number one is to manually select an edge and then create a bevel on that edge, and then you can just make it as wide or as narrow as you want with as many or as little uh, edges as you want like that, right? Now, the problem is when I was, uh, well, the way I detected this problem was when I was creating uh, my guitar in my last video, uh, and the neck of the guitar has some interesting bevels uh, where one part of the neck has a very wide bevel, like over here, it's very wide, but the rest of the neck has some pretty narrow bevels. Now, if you try to use that with uh, the manual uh, bevel uh, tool by pressing Control B when you select an edge, sure, you can make this edge, uh, this bevel here as wide as you want, but then you can't really uh, add another bevel uh, of a narrower width uh, over here on the side because as you can see the topology just gets completely messed up if you try to add another separate bevel over here. So you have to create all the bevels on the connecting edges at the same time which doesn't exactly let you control the width uh, of each bevel separately so you have to do it all uh, at the same width, right? Now, one way you can kind of fix this problem is if you go with a bevel modifier, okay? You add a bevel modifier and then you set the limit method to the weight, okay? So what this does is it tells Blender uh, to detect uh, the weight of a particular edge and that determines how wide the bevel is going to be. So you can control the weight of an edge in edit mode. You have this transform menu over here and then you can set the mean bevel uh, weight over here to anything you like and you can control that separately for each edge, okay? So for example, this edge over here, we can set the bevel weight to something like uh, 0 0.1 then over here we can set it to 0 0.2, then 0 0.3, we can make it higher and higher, but eventually we're going to get to a, a weight of 1, and then uh, that's about as far as we can go, right? Now, uh, I don't use this tool a lot, so probably there's some ways to control this a little bit better, uh, but uh, it's very clunky and it doesn't let, you, uh, doesn't let you use a tool very freely, so we have to come up with a different way to control uh, the bevel width, okay? And the way I like to do that is uh, by just literally manually uh, setting or scaling up or down uh, each bevel. And what do I mean by that? Let me show you. So we want to have a very wide bevel over here on this edge, but a very narrow bevel over here on this edge. Okay, and on a few of these other edges, we want to have the bevel kind of gradually increasing into a, b a wider bevel on this part over here. Okay, let's uh, remove all this bevel weight here, set that back to zero. And what we're going to do, first thing, we're going to select uh, these two loop cuts. Okay, we're going to select those, we're going to duplicate them, and then we're going to right click to snap them right back to where they are. And then uh, we're going to separate that into a new object for now. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, create a bevel along both of these edge loops. Wait, let's just work with one now for this demonstration. One is going to be enough. Okay, we're just going to work with this one. Uh, you get the idea. You do the same thing on the other side. And we're going to create a bevel along this entire edge. We're going to make it pretty narrow. Let's see, we'll give it uh, four or five uh, edges. And we're going to make it something like this. Now we want this edge to stay about the same width over here at the base. And then we want the bevel to become much wider on this part. And then it's going to go back to being quite narrow on this part over here, okay, around the head of the guitar. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this edge loop that we duplicated and separated. Uh, we're going to use each vertex on this edge loop as a reference point. And from that point, okay, this is the original uh, angle where the bevel is originating from. We're going to use that point uh, as a way to control uh, the width of the bevel at that point, okay? So let's see, over here we're going to leave the bevel as it is. But uh, over here we're going to slowly start increasing the weight of our bevel, okay? So we're going to go up here, we're going to set our pivot point to the 3D cursor. So now every time we select something, uh, we, can, uh, we put our 3D cursor over here to this vertex, Shift S, cursor to select it. Now, every time we select something and scale it, it's going to scale away from the 3D cursor. Every time we rotate something, it's going to rotate around the 3D cursor, okay? So the 3D cursor is now pretty much the point of reference for anything we do. So what we can do now is we can go back to this uh, first object, or we can even connect this back now because it's not intersecting with any of the other uh, vertices here. So it's we can clearly see which part is this part and which part is the guitar, okay? So let's take this edge and let's join it back together uh, with the main object, Control J. And we're going to snap our 3D cursor over here, and then we're going to select this part of the bevel. Okay, so we're going to select these couple of edges over here. 
and we're going to slowly start scaling this up. Okay, so we're going to scale this up away from the 3D cursor. You see now it starts scaling exactly from this point or scaling down towards this point. We're going to scale this up to something like 1.2. Okay, not that, that much. 1.5, something like that. Slowly start increasing the size. Then we're going to go to this edge. We're going to snap our 3D cursor there. So shift S, cursor to selected. And we're going to select uh, these few edges over here. Okay. And then we're going to increase it by a little bit more. So we're going to scale it up. This time, instead of 1.5, we might scale it by something like 2. Okay. And we're just going to keep doing that on every edge. So over here, we might scale it to something like, like 3. You, know, you don't even have to do it by numbers. You just kind of uh, eyeball it and see what looks best in this situation. And uh, for this demonstration, I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about it being too smooth. So we're not going to try to be very exact with every edge, but you get the idea here. Okay, so we're going to slowly start increasing each of these edges over here. Each of these bevels is going to be bigger and bigger and wider and wider. All right. And then eventually, we're going to get to the last uh, uh, vertex over here. And this is supposed to be the widest, uh, the widest uh, bevel. Okay. Now, maybe I was a little bit too, uh, too uh, sparing with the size of these uh, bevels here. But anyway, the idea is this edge is supposed to be much uh, wider. This bevel is supposed to be much wider than the rest. We can take our time to make these a little bit uh, a little bit smoother as well, since this looks pretty ridiculous at this point. All right, let's scale those up a little more. Uh, something like that is good enough for now. Okay. Now we might want to undo this because we have to keep track of exactly how big this bevel is. This is going to be useful because so we place our 3D cursor here. And then we scale this one up to let's say, what's that going to be about four times the size. Okay. And we want this edge over here to have the exact same width as the other one over there, or this bevel, not the edge. So over on this side, we're going to scale this up by the same number. So we're going to scale it up by a factor of four. And now that has the exact same width as the bevel over here. And then we can just slowly go back and start uh, start scaling this ba uh, back down. So this one's going to be a little bit narrower than the widest bevel there. And then we're going to make this one, uh, the next one, again, a little bit more narrow than the one before. And we're going to do that a few times until it smoothly transitions back into the original bevel width. Okay. And as you can see, now that we started from this side, from the wide side, we can kind of get a smoother result. So maybe uh, it'll be wiser to start with the, a wider edge with the wider bevel first and then go down. But as you can see, now we can manually control the width of every bevel. And we can make it as wide or as narrow as we like at any given point. Okay. Now the problem with this technique is that it's rather time consuming and you got to be pretty precise, but it can give you exactly the result that you want. And once we're finished, we just go over here and we, uh, we get rid of this extra edge loop that we have over here. And if you want to, you can just add some smooth shading over here. And uh, let's also add some uh, auto smooth so we don't have any of this messy geometry uh, over here. And now that pretty much gives us the result that we want. So we can perfectly control each uh, bevel width at any given point. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Uh, if you want me to make more very clear and specific uh, explanation for modeling tricks like this, let me know in the comments. I think this stuff is very useful if you're trying to up your modeling game. It's very important uh, to know a whole bunch of different modeling tricks and a bunch of different techniques that can help you achieve exactly what you want. But thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you around.